Uh, Compass Layer Network Fabric. So today we are going to speak uh, about network again. Uh, I don't know if you were there two years ago at Canal ECPs 2013, but we did a presentation uh, about uh, the project we started uh, a few years ago. So maybe uh, you can raise your hand if you were there so I have a better idea. Okay, so just a few people. Uh, so now the, the thing we found interesting this year is to present you the follow-up of this project uh, since we have been working on. So I'm William, I'm from uh, Gandhi.net. Um, it's a quite well-known uh, registrar, at least in Europe. And so maybe I can describe uh, the usual path, uh, the usual things uh, our customers are doing. Uh, when coming at Gandhi.net. So basically, um, maybe they, they, they buy a domain name, uh, they can uh, also uh, buy an SSL certificate, uh, which uh, can be linked to it, and maybe they want to uh, host their website using uh, our uh, platform as a service <coughs> product, which is called <coughs> Simple Hosting, sorry. But if they want a more advanced feature, uh, they also can use our virtual machines, which is the last product. And finally, if they want uh, a more um, advanced um, infrastructure, they can uh, add several virtual machines using uh, either the website or our Gandhi uh, CLI. And this virtual machine can be uh, connected together using our uh, product called uh, pri private network. So this is uh, the private network uh, with, uh, is um, the product we have made um, um, according to the project we presented uh, two years ago. So I'm going to do uh, some uh, background about what we, present, we presented uh, two years ago because it will help you to understand uh, why um, the, the, the follow-up of the project. So at Kernel Recipes 2013, uh, the biggest, uh, the main aim was to provide a large-scale uh, multi-tenancy network. So I took the picture uh, I showed you two years ago and so it's basically showing the logical view of uh, a usual data center. So you have the customers coming from the top on, uh, through internet. They are going through all the different uh, layers and they are using uh, the virtual machines on the server, which uh, we are calling uh, nodes at Gandhi. Okay, so now we can go uh, to see a, um, what were the requirements uh, we had uh, for this project. So before uh, this project, we were able to um, move the virtual machines from one point to another one um, within the data center. So it means that we were able to stop the virtual machine, move it to another node, and everything uh, should work uh, without any um, configuration change, etc. So we wanted to keep that. Another thing was uh, being able to uh, also live migrate the machine from another point uh, to, to another without any um, um, cut of the network uh, while uh, moving this, uh, this virtual machine. <laughs> Uh, the second point is about the management. So I'm particularly thinking about uh, the administrator uh, which is, who is working uh, on our data centers and when, uh, when he wants to add uh, new nodes, he just had to plug the machine, uh, plug the electrical cables and also um, put uh, the, um, the network. And when it boots, it can be used um, as soon as possible without any uh, human intervention to uh, modify any configuration, etc. 
One of the biggest important thing uh, for this project was the layer two scaling. So I'm thinking about the usual um, uh, TKM issues. So we don't uh, want to uh, have any, um, any uh, well-known <coughs> issues about adding more and more virtual machine, uh, virtual interfaces on our network. So we, we want to be able to have as many MAC addresses as we want. So the, the next point is about uh, the fault, resi fault resilience. So it's somehow connected to, to the easy management because if uh, the guy in charge uh, to um, upgrade a machine or um, if one machine is going uh, down, crashing, etc., cetera, um, it has to be uh, zero configuration. So no human intervention uh, if there is a machine uh, going down. And the very last point uh, was about the VLAN scalability, uh, which is, uh, will be responsible uh, to uh, differentiate packets uh, from others in order cr to create uh, VLANs. So we wanted to have uh, as many VLANs as we, uh, as we wanted, as we needed, sorry. So this picture is showing what I just said. Um, resuming what I just said. So you have the customers coming from the top, different customers, they are using their virtual machines, and those virtual machines are linked together, and they don't see any noise uh, from uh, the neighbor, um, speaking about uh, the virtual um, interfaces. So in order to um, make this project happen, we based um, our project on the Trill specification. So the Trill specification is an RFC, as you may see, and as I said, one of the most important thing here is we have to keep it at layer two. And another point which is defined in this RFC is that we uh, may be uh, able to uh, connect machines together directly. So once you connect machines uh, directly together, you will be able to have uh, multiple uh, possible paths. <coughs> so imagine in case of uh, issues, you will be able to uh, elect another path uh, in order to keep the connection active. Or you may also want to um, different state, uh, different traffic um, um, from one point and divide it you know, to uh, two different uh, nodes. Another thing was, uh, as I said before, about uh, the STP. So we want to, uh, we, we don't want any more TCAM issues. We also want uh, to prevent loops. So I need to, give you uh, some more breakpoints about loops. So the three specifications uh, are saying that uh, when you need uh, to send multicast packets on your network, you need to elect what we call uh, a DT route, uh, which is a distributed uh, tree route. And it will be the route of the multicast tree, and this multicast tree will be common to uh, all your network. So. Basically, all your uh, nodes on your net through network will be aware of uh, to which node he has to send the next packet to. So this is a common, a common agreement which permit that. Um, I think I've been almost on all the points here. Um, automatic management, as I said before. Um, now that we have seen uh, how is defined uh, uh, the Trill uh, specifications, we may uh, have a look at the header. So at the bottom here, you have the uh, quite uh, well-known, I mean, I imagine for everyone here, uh, the uh, Ethernet frame. So that's uh, a package which could be um, um, output uh, from a virtual machine on its um, virtual interface. And once it comes uh, on, on, on the node side, we will encapsulate the Trill header. Um, it's important to note that uh, here, we never touch the packet uh, from the virtual machine. We, we never modify it. 
Um, to better understand that, that uh, I, I forgot to, to, to add that instead of uh, implementing uh, the Trill specifications on our switches, we choose to move the intelligence from the switches uh, to the nodes, which are uh, running the virtual machines. So basically, the nodes are um, uh, small, uh, small uh, software switches. Now, I may go through a bit more details of the Twill header. So it's called a VNT encapsulation for a virtual network Twill encapsulation. We may uh, go through the first one uh, here with this scene, uh, the Twill header. So I will not detail all the different fields because it's not important uh, to understand the presentation, but we may note that they have, uh, you have the egress and uh, ingress nickname, which are, um, so the nickname are the identifier of each <coughs> node. So it represents the identity of the node on the network and it permits uh, the layer two uh, routing. Um, it's coded on 16 bits, uh, which, is, which permits uh, about uh, 65, uh, more than 65,000 uh, different nicknames on your network. And it also explains uh, one more that I will use later, uh, campus, uh, for the size, uh, for the possible size uh, of the virtual network. The second field uh, is uh, the VNT either, uh, which is also not uh, really important in this presentation, but uh, it's a reminder about the VLAN scalability. So we added uh, this, um, this VNT either in order to permit um, uh, to create as many VLANs as we wanted. So it's, uh, it's using uh, another identifier, which is called VNI for virtual network identifier. And it's coded on uh, 24 bits, which permits uh, up to uh, 60 million uh, different VLANs. So let's go back to one of the previous pictures I showed you. So I don't know if you remember uh, the very first, first pictures I showed you about the logical view of a data center. So now if you apply the twill specifications, uh, you will be able to, um, um, to change the logical view of your data center. So once you apply the tool specifications, that's what you uh, obtain. So we have just added a, a new component called Airbridge, and it's added uh, on our nodes, and it's formed uh, the tool network. So now that I've gave you the background of the project uh, two years ago, we now have uh, a projection working with different uh, tool network uh, working. This network are working separately, so that's different entities. Maybe that uh, we, we, we thought that maybe a new improvement which could be uh, made now is um, to add gateways in order to connect the, um, the different um, data center together. So this will permit to provide to our customers new functionalities, uh, maybe if they want to, um, to, to connect the service uh, in different places. So that's a logical uh, view of when we want to connect two different network uh, sites, we need to add gateways. So, but how do we resolve that? So, the obvious solution here is we have different twill network. We need to connect them. So, what about uh, just adding a new link uh, between the two different sites? So, that's what is shown here. You have uh, two data center, which is which are site one and site two. So each uh, point here in gray are uh, different nodes of the network. They are identified by a nickname. Here we have ABCND on the left and MBENG on the right. So, one, so what are the possible uh, issues we can see here? If we are just connecting different uh, twill, independent twill network, 
there will be um, what we may call a Zen exen extension. So you will just create a big, huge tool network. The first issue you may think of is about network administrators. So uh, as long as you add data centers, you will connect them together and your network will become more and more um, bigger, uh, will become bigger. So imagine you have issues, you will have to debug it uh, across all your different data center and it could uh, be uh, really difficult, as you may understand. The other thing about um, doing a Zen, a Zen extension is about the topology. So here, um, you need to have, in your tool network, you need to have a view of your network with the different uh, nicknames present in order to know to which node you, uh, you want to send the packets to. So imagine you have, uh, for example, a node on top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom. Imagine the one, uh, the one node in the, at the bottom is uh, going down, you will need some time in order to make sure that the one in the middle will uh, see that the one at the bottom is actually going down. So this will make uh, the topology calculation more and more longer since uh, you will um, need some more possible time depending on your topology uh, to, uh, um, to replicate the information of uh, the topology uh, uh, modifications. <coughs> Another point is uh, you may have seen the nicknames. So the nicknames, uh, as I said, are A, B, C, and D on the left, and A, B, E, and G on the right. We have here, as you may see, uh, two A and B. The good thing here uh, about managing a two-tool network is that the specifications permits to uh, detect the collisions and a new election will be made. So the result uh, will be as follows here. So here we have just renamed uh, A, B to e, X and Z. So that's one point uh, which is resolved, but is it really uh, something we want on our network to manage? Um, and the last point I forgot it was about, of course, the multicast traffic. So when you uh, send multicast uh, traffic, you will have to spread all your packets across all your data center. So knowing all this issue, uh, the project uh, aim was to uh, try to resolve that. So the thing uh, we proposed uh, here uh, what is called the multi-level tool protocol for MLTP. So basically here, we wanted uh, to keep um, different parts uh, um, of the network uh, separated. So here we are just introducing what we call a level, which will keep uh, this uh, possible. So the level one will represent a data center, which is uh, defined as a campus in the tool specification. And the level two will be called a backbone. So a backbone uh, at the level two will be responsible to do the connections between two level one. So before this project, we have different nodes called average. And now that we have introduced a level, we need um, a new component in order to make the communication possible between uh, two uh, levels. So that's why we are introducing here uh, another component called border average. So this new component will have a connection uh, between the level one and the level two. So now that yes, uh, this, uh, th this particular um, component has now um, two different links. Uh, so as you may see in the picture, you have the level one on the left and the level one uh, on the right. So since we have a different uh, type of links, uh, there will be some modifications on the control plane. So before this project, you had different averages talking together that now we have levels, they are still talking together as before, and so we will call the connection between two averages uh, level one. 
L1 link, sorry. And here in these pictures, uh, we have put in green two different border average in, the, in two different data center, and they are exchanging information uh, through a level two. And they also may need to exchange information. I will detail that uh, in the next slides. Um, uh, and what we called an L1 and L2 link, since they have a connection in the, in the two different levels. If we go back to the previous picture here, we may see that you may imagine that uh, once uh, a connection is um, done on the left by an bridge, so it will contact the nearest uh, border bridge. But here we just have one. So imagine there is um, a connection failure or this node is going down. The, the, the connection is uh, simply broken. So we simply uh, had redundancy here. So now we have two different uh, border average. And if you think about the example uh, I just told you, now that you have an average on the left in the level one, Imagine that the communication is going through uh, the one at the bottom, and the one at the bottom is failing. The average will, um, will see that, and it will redo the communications uh, to the, the one at the top. So that's what I just said about uh, the failing issues. So, in order to, to, to make sure that we don't lose the connections, we decided that uh, we could move the Intel engines from the level one to the level two. What does that mean? It means that we just, um, in, we are introducing what we call a pseudo gateway, which will be responsible uh, to uh, talk to the outside world. So imagine that now you have uh, average uh, which want to communicate to the outside world, it will communicate to the getaway. So how would, does it work that the, the different border average in your network will uh, at first communicate together uh, through the level one and two uh, link in order to uh, create a nickname, a unique nickname, which will be presented uh, to other parts of the network. So now the average on the left will just see uh, one single uh, possible uh, average, a border average. And so imagine that the communications is going through the one at the bottom. If it fails, the communications will be uh, then possible on the top. And the one on the top will be aware of the, all the, the things at, uh, that happened before. So imagine a case where you are building uh, your uh, forwarding table. Uh, the information will be exchanged so that the one at the top uh, will not have to redo all the, the discovering. So now, uh, this is a picture to, to, to resume what I've just said. So we now have uh, different levels, so level one and level two. Here we have put uh, different uh, border average, which are um, which are connected together and are seen as pseudo gateways. And uh, that's it. Uh, now I wanted to um, show you, to remind you uh, one of the first uh, example I, I talked about the, the possible issues. I don't know if you uh, remember um, the example where you had different nicknames on the left and uh, possible collision on the right when we, you were managing uh, two different uh, twill network. So now that we have uh, levels, things are uh, a bit different. We are going to, to see uh, what's going on now. At the very start, I told you about the detroot, which is responsible to, um, to decide, uh, if I may say, uh, a, multi, a common multicast tree which will be common to all the twin network. So now that we have uh, levels, we will have a detail root uh, per level. So here in this picture, you can see that on the left, you have uh, a multicast tree and also on the right, 
So here we have elected uh, the, the pseudo gateway 22 as a DT root, and it's connected directly connected to 24 and also 20. On the right is the same thing, but we have elected uh, 88, which is connected to 20 and 47. And so it's, it's the very same thing in the middle, but it's a very simple example here. So 22 is the uh, uh, digital root of this level and is connected to uh, 47. So you may have seen that uh, now we have two average with the same nickname, so 20 on the uh, very left and one on the very right. So imagine that you are sending uh, packets from 24, multicast packet from 24 to 88. So just it's simple, you have to follow the multicast tree. So 24, we simply uh, send the packets to 22. 22 is a pseudo gateway, so you will just duplicate the packet and spread it on the level one. So here we only have uh, 20 left. And it will also spread the packet on the other side um, for uh, 47. And 47 will act ex in the exact same way. It will spread uh, all the packets uh, in, the, in the level one. So here we will follow the, 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 the multicast tree. So it will go to 88 and, the, and then 20. What's important to note here about the very first example about the, 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 the nickname collision here, here is that we never have any knowledge uh, in the uh, right side that there is a nickname 20. What I mean is when the packets are coming from 20 to 22, so 22 will act as a gateway and the source will be replaced by itself and the packet will be sent on the other side um, normally and the packet will, uh, will never have any uh, knowledge of a possible 20 uh, on the left. So what if we change a little, a little bit this example? We just exchange the uh, pseudo gateway uh, 47 uh, with the 20 on the right, on the right side. Yes, that's exact, this example I yeah, was going to talk about. So we are just switching uh, 47 with uh, 20 on the right side. So now the example is quite different that you may see that the multicast tree has now um, a weird thing. What I mean is you can see that 22 is now connected to 20 and also uh, to 20 on the other, on the other side. So that's a problem here since when you will get packets uh, on 22, it will not all know uh, to which node you have to send the packets to. So what we decided, even if there are multiple possible ways to resolve that, we decided uh, also for performances that once we have this case, 22 will just decide to drop the packets coming from the level one. So what it means, it means that 20 will be, on the, on the left, will be able to communicate within its own data center, but will never be able to send packets outside its data center. Why? Because we thought that it was better to um, make sure that the level two was always able to communicate, to uh, communicate packets, because it's more important since they are uh, doing the communications between different parts of the network. So, yeah, as I said, 20 will be uh, still able to communicate, but just only within uh, its data center. Okay. Um, now that I've been through these uh, modifications in the control plane, we may go back to the twill header. So this is the previous picture I showed you. Um, I just removed the VNT because it's not important uh, here. 
but now how do we implement uh, this level thing uh, within uh, the current uh, tool header? So what we choose to do here is to use the level, um, the result field on top here. We just rename the result field uh, to level. Why there is some reason for that? So again, we have an already uh, working uh, network. We have different data centers and uh, they are all using uh, the Trill, um, the Trill uh, specifications. So we do have packets, uh, this type of packets uh, going on. We don't want to break anything. We don't want to uh, reboot our nodes. We don't want to do any upgrades. We just want to add our gateways and make it work. So the good thing about this result field is that the default value is zero. So basically, uh, and logically, zero re re represents uh, the level one. And when we will have gateways, uh, the implementation will just uh, switch the level, uh, the level uh, to the one bit, and it will represent the level two. So the conclusion here is that we, are, we may be able to add uh, our getaways within our data center and connect them uh, without any modifications. The only possible uh, issues we could have is uh, the, the previous uh, example I showed you about uh, the nicknames. But it's a, it's a trade-off at the end. So I haven't talked uh, a lot about uh, the Linux kernel, but I thought I could give you some uh, history about uh, the choices we've made. So this Trill specifications are, is based on the Linux bridge. So we were, um, why? Because we were using the Linux bridge from many years ago uh, to connect uh, our virtual machines and also our containers. So we found it really convenient to be able to uh, switch, uh, if I may say, uh, um, the, the previous network uh, to a Trill uh, net, uh, network. Um, and also uh, gained the, the already uh, implemented uh, things uh, in the Linux bridge. So we have been maintaining this version along the years so, uh, from uh, 3.4 to uh, 4.1 today. Um, I also wanted to talk about um, what we did since because this project has, um, has released uh, our product um, the private network, as I said at the beginning, but now uh, that we have some more experience, uh, we are thinking about um, pushing our public uh, network within a true network. To better understand that, I should explain you a bit more uh, how it works at Gandhi. When we need to add a public range uh, for our customers, we uh, are set up a new VLAN, a new regular VLAN, if I may say, and so all the switches needs to be updated uh, for the configurations and also the nodes and also maybe the ACL, etc. The benefits of pushing the public network within a Trill network, it means that we may be able to create a unique uh, public network uh, across uh, our data center and then we just need to have and uh, gateways which will be responsible to encapsulate and decapsulate packets uh, coming from the outside uh, in order to, to do the communications with the outside world. Um, so basically it should make the things uh, uh, easier to manage. Um, these gateways could be also uh, at least in our experimentations, we have put this in a virtual machine, so it permits to think about the future. Imagine if you want, uh, if we want to do uh, new uh, implementations using uh, another kernel. I'm thinking about, for example, unikernels like WSV to have better perf performances, etc. So speaking about the future thing, 
I wanted to talk uh, about what we may uh, improve in the next uh, following years. So speaking about first the control plane, um, with our experience now, and we, if we see what's going on on the, the, the twill world, open v switch, uh, which is more uh, attractive uh, according to uh, what the people and the developers are uh, willing to, to use uh, when starting a new project, especially speaking about SDN, etc. It should be, it could be more attractive to do an implementation to make it work to, uh, with open v switch. So, in order to res resolve that, we may think about doing a new implementation which will uh, create uh, a separated um, device like, like, like uh, they do with uh, VXLine, and uh, this device will be able to work with the Linux bridge and also open this switch. I also mentioned the central view because uh, speaking about open this switch, you may think about uh, a possible way to have your the open flow uh, plugin and meaning that we could have a central a central view of your network and so for example if you are thinking about a DDoS uh, case you will be able uh, to uh, react more easily and uh, faster uh, when uh, such events happens um, Regarding specifically, I mean, the, the, the twill specifications are all uh, decentralized. So when you need to push something, uh, you need to, do, to wait sometimes before uh, every node is aware of uh, a new possible route. With a new implementations, with a central view, you will be able to push the route uh, as fast, uh, faster than, than the current decentralized implementation. And the last point I wanted to talk about is about the data, data plane implementation. So at the beginning, I talked to you about uh, the ability for you to have cables between your nodes directly. So it's really, it could be convenient, but in our case, uh, for example, uh, you, will, you may have packets going through one node to another, and the packets will have to go from your uh, network cards to the Linux kernel, and so this will have overheads before it just uh, will see that the packet is not uh, for, for him, so he will have to uh, reroute uh, this. So basically, we are thinking about um, moving the data plane outside and move it uh, within uh, network uh, programmable cards in order to, to, to make, uh, to have a better uh, latency. I just wanted to finish this uh, presentation uh, just by noting that all this work is uh, uh, based on the uh, ClueNet uh, paper we have uh, wrote and that we will present uh, next, uh, next week. All the twill sources are available on our, on our GitHub uh, as, as always, and I think I'm done <laughs> with this presentation. Thank you. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the main reason is just we are using layer two just because I should maybe uh, redo the question. So, so you are asking about uh, why we are not using layer three at the end and not uh, and only uh, layer two. So, in my opinion, uh, the main reason is uh, that uh, the main goal here we know. Uh, for which size we are going to, to, to work. I mean, it's a data center view, so we don't need uh, much, uh, that much nodes. We uh, already have uh, 65,000 possible nodes, so 
using the layer two is way enough. So I don't think um, using the layer three, uh, it's possible, but I don't think uh, we will benefit that much from the layer three. Yes. 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 I think it's the same view as, I don't know, do you know VXLAN? VXLAN, which is using layer 3. Uh, no, sorry, it's layer 3. It's using uh, layer 3. Sorry. <laughs> But I don't really get what, what, you want, what you want to know here. Um, yeah, but we don't need to scale that much since it's kept at the uh, data center view. So. I don't know how to explain that uh, better, but. Another question, maybe? Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, so if I remember correctly, um, the last test we have done, uh, especially for the public traffic uh, using the Linux kernel, it was uh, about uh, a bit less than 800,000 uh, packets per second uh, with uh, 1,500 uh, bytes. Um, 
I agree that that's not necessary uh, uh, enough, but it depends on your use cases. Uh, if you separate uh, everything, you, it may be enough. But that's why um, I presented you the future development. So we know that uh, we may have issues if we want uh, better performances. So I, in, in our opinion, the, one of the best things here could be to move the data plane uh, outside the Linux kernel. So, but we may have, we may work a bit more on this, the performances because we didn't work that much, in fact. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, to my opinion, it was good enough uh, in order to, to, to satisfy the, the customers because um, if I remember correctly, it's uh, 200 megabytes, the limit we are in the private network we are providing. So it was sufficient uh, at that time. Now that we are pushing the, the public network, uh, it's still an experimentation, but uh, that's the numbers I told you. Uh, so if we have really these final numbers, it could be uh, sufficient, uh, depending if you separate uh, each public branch, so you will have the same um, performances um, on each uh, gateways. So it could be sufficient, but we know that we can correctly resolve that by, by a new implementation. Uh, what do Sorry? Yeah. We just... We are just making sure our MTU is correctly uh, configured everywhere. No, we don't touch anything in the VM, so the important part here is uh, from the node side. So we are just making sure that uh, the MTU on every node on the network are correct, uh, are big enough to, 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 to welcome the packets we are encapsulated. Yeah, but... Yes, yes, we do have, but uh, um, I mean, the MTU is limited on the VM side, so we know that uh, the maximum size uh, which could be output. Okay. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. So since we know the, the maximum, we, we don't care. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's about the same reason. Uh, when speaking about different data center, when the packets will go from one node to uh, the to the backbone, um, the source will be replaced by the nickname from. Uh, the backbone from the pseudo gateway, sorry. So when the packets will come to the to the end, uh, it will not know that there was a source which has the very same nickname. So it's so a the destination. Um, the dest um, what was the destination? Um, I don't think it will cause issues um, I have to remind uh, uh, yes yes yeah I don't exactly remind me uh, the, the the details of it but I should rework an example with the forwarding table in order to resolve that. Because um, I'm not quite sure why you still don't have a problem with that. Yes. 
guess it works for multi-channel, but I don't know if it's going to work for I don't exactly remind me, I'm sorry. I, I should double check that. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain you uh, right now. I will double check that, <laughs> sorry. Any other questions? No, thank you.